This discussion is hot on the internet right now. Will being Chinese ever be considered cool? Let's talk about yes or no, and also why everybody keeps asking this question. You are asking the wrong question about whether or not you will ever be cool. You should be worried about shifting a unipolar world to dual. Also school. Um, we got to talk about it, Andrew. There is a Reddit post titled, and this is from a male perspective this time. We, we covered one from a female perspective. Will China slash Chinese ever be able to lose the negative stereotypes? Mm. He goes on to say that people hate being Chinese. Even Chinese Americans of varying generations seem to hate being Chinese. Everything from the traditional culture, modern culture, to everything we know about the negative stereotypes. China does not have an upper hand with soft power, with things like fashion, pop music, TV shows. Right now, the biggest Chinese products exported overseas are text products and everything else Chinese is considered either a cheaper knockoff version or antiquated cultural products such as gua sha or TCM. Mm. Long story short, Andrew, he basically says that Korea and Japan have their variety of things that are considered cool, whereas a lot of Chinese Americans feel a disconnect with China because when they were growing up, they had nothing cool except what old school things, Confucianism, filial piety, Erhu, Erhu music. That's hilarious. He said Erhu music. And he goes, so when my question is, will China or Chinese ever be able to lose the negative stereotypes or will it just take several generations for people to see China just as normal people? Wow. This is a crazy question. We've talked about this before in different ways, but I guess the question is, yeah, will being Chinese ever be considered cool? And anybody who's cool that is Chinese, what? Is it because they don't act or look Chinese, right? But anyways, David, I guess... I have, an, I have my quick answer before we get into our, our comment section, but why do people keep posting this question? Why is this such a burning question for so many Chinese in the West? Uh, you're saying because there's so many articles that have been written about it. There's so many posts on a variety of platforms that yeah, have been yeah, written yeah. about it. It why, is because Chinese culture compared to Japanese, Korean, and even in some ways like Vietnamese or Filipino, even though the Southeast Asian countries are in a different situation, like they just don't seem very adaptive to the West. Mm. That's the easiest way I can put it. It seems like Chinese things, they tend to be so centered in things that were created in China that those things seem very outmoded, outdated, esoteric, and on the downside end, just woefully uncool in 2023. Right. Now, is it uncool to be Asian because those things are very truly Asian or it's just that those things are still outdated like is Japan being more Asian than China is or Chinese culture you know what I mean like I guess I guess right, you're saying because for example Japan and Korea they maintain a lot of the bowing that went away hundreds of years ago in China right but they it's both seem like they have a better grasp of western at least Pop culture. No, no, no. It seems like Japan, in a weird way, and especially Japan, is both more in tune with its ancient side and in tune with the modern world yeah. simultaneously. Very but I think you could even make some arguments about that. They still use coins on the Tokyo subway system right. and things like that. Yeah, there's some throwback things. I guess nobody's perfect. But I guess, David, do you have an answer? Yes or no? Will it ever be cool to be considered Chinese? Listen, guys, we're going to get to the bottom of it. I think the answer is extremely complicated, so make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. However, you know what could make Chinese things cool or is a cool Chinese thing? Maybe you cannot shift this type of like global narrative realistically. This is trying to take the best parts of a Western finishing oil and a Chinese mala chili oil. Smala, check it out. Very delicious. Tons of chefs and foodies like it. Um, as far as I've been alive, <clears throat> Andrew, being Chinese was never considered cool. <clears throat> Whoa. Uh, I'm not saying Bruce Lee didn't have a little boop, 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 blip for his time. There's some RIP, cool Chinese you know icons. I mean? There's some but, uh, icons that are cool. As far as the 80s and 90s go, uh, you know, it was all Japan. Japan was already cool. Obviously, the last 15 years, Korea has been hyper cool. Japan's yeah. like still cool, but cooled off a little bit. So, uh, of the last, you know, my life, 30 years, it's never been cool. Okay. So what do you what do you think for the future? Will it ever be cool? I think that it's got a chance in another 20, 30 years, potentially. Uh -huh. But I don't think that people should hold their breath. I do think they're probably better off redefining what they think is cool. Not necessarily redefining what they think is cool, but finding the significance in the impact cool. Mm. Because, uh, I mean, it's just a very large and confusing country, right? Andrew, as somebody who, like yourself, you were the youngest child in a Chinese family, probably the most Americanized, you might even have a different perception of it because I'm more, I'm born deep in it, you know what I mean? My first language was Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, you're born a little bit 
outside of it, but came back into it. Yeah. I mean, I think the short answer is uh, no, I don't think it will ever be perceived as cool. And here's why I say specifically the word perceived as cool, because I think there will be many cool things to come out of China, cool things on a Western level still, whether it's clothes, gadgets, even characters, there's going to be some cool movies. There's some cool icons. We have Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, blah, blah, Jet Li. These guys are cool. And some of the new games coming out, Genshin Impact, but, the Sun Kong game. But if you made me say on a a average level of how the average person views it. No, it won't be cool. And here's the reason why it's because China is such a big and complicated country. And in the Western ideas, it is so hard to put it on a good or bad scale. People in the West, we want to talk about China as it is a good or bad. Is China good or bad? Is it good or bad? Is it good or bad? And to be honest, it's complex. That's what it is. It's both got some great things about it, and it is an extremely powerful country, and it's right up there with America as far as leaders in the world that are going to impact the rest of the world. But a lot of people don't want to admit that. A lot of people don't want to look to China for any sort of leadership because China has certain flaws about the country that we don't like. So you're saying America is the all-good superpower. <laughs> China's the 50-50 superpower, but probably more on the downside. And Russia is the all-bad superpower. But <laughs> they kind of look white, and I like the girls, so that kind of makes me feel a little bit, you know, torn about it because I like yeah. Trump and Trump likes Putin. Yeah, so if I had to put it on the big countries, I'd put America is viewed as good, very good. And then India is kind of like in a neutral zone. China is slightly negative, And then Russia is considered very negative. So that's how it's, I think it's going to stay in that order for a long time. Right, and those are your four essentially major yeah. superpowers in because, the world, right? Because they're big countries. Because complex identities... And complex issues are very hard for the average person to understand. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not saying people are stupid. I'm just saying that it is very hard to balance these things. And a lot of people are not going to give it enough empathy and thought to realize that it's just good and bad. Right. And there's people who even, Andrew, could be smart at their job, but not dedicate a lot of brain power to thinking about this aspect of life. Yeah. So they, they can have blind spots where they're like hyper, <clears throat> they're, they're not a hyper simplistic person, but their view on China could be hyper simplistic. Yeah. yeah I, but I do think the image will get better. I'll say this. I think it's going to get better. I don't know if it's ever going to be on cool level, like Japan cool. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Right. I think here's one thing, Andrew. You could look at the stuff that's coming up, Andrew. The EVs are coming up. I don't know if they'll ever let the EVs in America due to the geopolitical beef. The EVs are considered some of the top rated in the world. Andrew, the OnePlus Open was considered the top foldable phone of 2023. Uh, Andrew, I believe The Verge gave the Osmo Pocket 3 gadget of the year. That's DJI, right? You can film Netflix. You can film Hollywood movies on this DJI 4D camera now. Shanghai Tang, you know, they're starting to do some stuff with the denim yeah. chun shans. You know, I'm yeah, not saying yeah. they look that great, you know. I, I just think at the end of the day, you know, any great tech that comes out of China is going to be perceived to be use, used as some type of surveillance or hacking weapon against America. Right. That's just how it's going to be perceived. Maybe they do use some technology... Well, to hack America, and maybe they don't. Like, I, I don't know, but it's possible, but I'm just saying that's how it's perceived. Right, right, right. That is the perception. Um, somebody said, it is largely because China's pop culture lacks emotional, artistic, or any sort of sex appeal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's the one aspect I see, and we're going to get into the comments section, Andrew. I, I think whether it's a modern-day repression <clears throat> or a, even a historical repression back to the dynastic days, there is something very old-school about the way Chinese process their oxytocin. The way they have an oxytocin pool inside of the chest and the pipelines that lead to the oxytocin expression, there is something that is very stifled about that. And I think that that is probably the most overlooked aspect. You guys will read more about it in my book later because it just might be too much to get into into a, uh, you know, into a video. Anyway, let's get in the comment section. Somebody said, it's actually been getting a lot better over the past two years. A lot of video games such as Genshin Impact have Chinese themes. There's other ones. There's a new Sun Wukong video game coming out. Everybody's shopping okay. on Timu, AliExpress, Xi'an. Xi'an is from China. So yeah. I guess he's like, well, what do you mean? I don't know. Like, no, But then you know, a lot of people also on Instagram, when they make it fun of something, they're like, yo, that's when you get like Michael Jordan from Timu. Or yeah, 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 yeah. So it's kind of like both a joke, but also everybody buys it too. So it's like, it's right. this re weird thing. It's kind of like fast food where everybody partakes in it, but then they kind of still look down on it. 
You know what I mean? Right. It's weird. Just like TikTok, right? They're like, everybody, you know how everybody's like, gosh, you cannot find anything good on TikTok because TikTok is owned by Douyin. But then it's like, everybody's on TikTok. Still Look at the watch t- times. TikTok. Look at the watch you time. still watching TikTok. Uh, somebody said, you know, it really comes down to the Chinese government for getting rid of soft power, getting rid of the freedom needed to create soft power. Xi Jinping is really setting back China's image back to the Mao era. Uh, China was improving a lot when Hu Jintao was in power because mm. he, he was less strict. It's true. Hu Jintao was probably less strict than Xi Jinping. So a lot of other people said, you know, it'll probably happen, but it's going to take 30, 20 or 30 years. Mm. And somebody said, yeah, we'll probably find China will be cool around the same time we discover a true cure for male pattern baldness. That's funny. Um, Somebody said this Korean guy said, you know, guys, I understand what you're saying internally within Asians. You're right. It probably goes like Korea, Japan, and then way, way, way below China in terms of coolness. But he goes, I found that non-Asians don't really understand the difference. So what anybody is feeling about China being uncool is an internal Asian thing. Mm. Do you agree or disagree with that? That like people, this is like an internal Asian, Uh, like S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier ranking versus like an external thing. Yeah, I do think on the external, even those non-Asians who are into Asian culture and can kind of tell the difference, I think that they may still show even more empathy towards China's image and find the coolness in it even more than other Asians do. Yeah, it's possible. I would agree with that. I would agree with that because they're not like tapped into. Yeah, the they're also as not much. like yeah, they're not part of the rankings. Like they don't care. Somebody said, "Who cares about teenage pop culture? That's silly." Versus actually being able to shape shifts the geopolitics of the world. Basically, this is a classic argument from like defensive Chinese guys being like, "Yeah, who cares about soft power? Hard power is more important." Uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely, obviously in the big scheme of things, I think most people agree that hard power is more important. Right, like Jamaica's got a lot of soft power. But I think we're just, the reason why people ask this question all the time is because there's a lot of Chinese in the West who are just frustrated and they're wondering when they can potentially benefit or they feel like they're slightly suffering from the overall image of China. Right, because they cannot benefit from the hard power here. In fact, that that hard power competitiveness can only hurt them. And then the lack of soft power exports or desire for China's soft power also hurts them. Right. So it's also, in a weird way, living in the West, both aspects hurt you. Like, let's say China has the most power in the world or whatever, or takes over the world, but then, like, people don't like it, then they're still going to view China as negative. Even if China is like the most powerful right. country. It'll be a backlash against exactly. the number one ranking. Exactly. So, you know, I guess it's, it's all a tough. Bad. It's a tough one, guys. Somebody said the short answer is no. Sad to say, but with the current negative stereotypes, rising power of China, which is challenging the U.S., and lack of social awareness, this definitely will not happen in anybody's lifetime. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this, also, this guy said, the thing is, I don't need people to like being Chinese, to enjoy being Chinese myself. Maybe start off with that, huh? They only love you if you're not a threat to them. Do you want to be a pet to them or do you want to be a tiger, but a tiger that's hated essentially? If people hate being Chinese, they need to wake up. Don't wait for white people to validate your culture. Wow. No, that's a strong statement. I understand. I think the truth is you have to just find the aspects of Chinese culture that you actually think are important and significant and cool. And there are a lot to choose from, so you can pick and choose. But maybe you don't have to take on everything. Right, right. And you don't have to, like, look at everything. Like, it's a very intellectual place to be, though, to be able to balance it out and still, like, literally just see it for what it is or or as best as a human can because all humans are subject to bias. Somebody said they laughed when China was weak. Now they say we're evil when China is strong. Yeah, man. It's tough. Yeah. Um, This is more on a base micro level, Andrew. This guy said, I'm South Asian. It reminds me of a close female friend who said she hates being Chinese because the language sounds funny. The food is spicy or not appreciated amongst Americans unless it's Americanized. And she learned to speak Japanese and considers Japan superior. Um, Andrew, this is a pretty common thing we ran into in church. A lot of kids wanted to be Japanese growing up. Then later on in church, a lot of kids, not all, obviously it, there's a very, there's a variance. Some kids really wanted to be Korean. Mm-hmm. Nobody really wanted that, to be Chinese. That's why it's important. Like if you want to support Chinese products that you think make Chinese culture look better, or at least look more adaptive, it's important that you support. Mm. You don't have to support everything. 
but you have to find the things or the personalities that you support. And if you feel like uh, they're a good representation, if you think if you think it's Eileen Gu or the Fun Bros or Ronnie Higher Chang brothers, or, we or Higher Brothers, hang out with the whoever brothers. it may be for your own reasons, you should figure out a reason to support them. Yeah. I know that... You know, we're talking about hard power, soft power, geopolitics versus cool power. Uh, those things are completely separate, you know? Like, for example, Andrew, we had this Filipino friend, and his grandfather's name was Chino. But I remember he always tried to tell me that his Asiatic side was Japanese. And I always went, uh, hey, bro, did you know that if you were part Japanese and that's why your eyes look like that, it probably came from something really horrible happening. Whereas if you're actually just part Chinese, it's just going to come through a happy marriage. But he, he was just so locked into what was cool. I think later, once he got older, he kind of accepted it. But uh, like we said, people care about this cool ranking, right? Like, because we're sort of saying, even though you can look beyond like being an American satellite state or not, at the end of the day, if you're living in the U.S., none of that stuff matters, right? Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So anyway, um, somebody said, for those hoping and wishing China gets buddy-buddy with the U.S., forget it. It'll never happen. Mm. Yeah? I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, probably not for another 20, 30 years. It, it's going to, it, who knows, though. In the 20, 30 years, uh, China's going to be under different leadership. America's going to be under different leadership. Hopefully, it's more chill. Mm. I, I, I'm still optimistic about it, but, but cautiously optimistic. Somebody said, um, so a Japanese American has to hang their hat on anime, game consoles, and Hello Kitty. Like, what about all the ancient stuff? Is that stuff matter, too? And then, but I guess Japan, Andrew, they also got the samurai stuff, too. So they got they got the ancient stuff and the modern stuff. They just got a whole they just got an era from 1925 to like 1945 that's bad. Um somebody said as a Filipino, I see the true game from a bird's eye and I applaud China basically for for challenging the west. That's good. That's good. No, that's good. That's showing I guess yeah, I guess it's showing appreciation. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we're living in the West, so it, obviously it depends on, like, how much we're supposed to be bought into the Anglosphere or Anglo dominance or whatever, or U.S. dominance. Somebody says, it has to do with the scalability of bad news. China is the biggest country in the world. China and India are the biggest countries in the world. And they have a lot of good, middle, and horrible things happening. So anytime the Western news wants to dip into the horrible news pool, it is a gigantic pool of news. This, I think, is a very, very true comment. The, remember this comment. All right, remember this comment. This is a very true... The, the pooling scalability. Guys, these countries are anywhere from three to four times the size of America. I always say, if you times America by four, you know how many people would die of drunk driving accidents, drug overdoses, gun violence, like literally shooting each other, not cops shooting bad guys, right. like literally people shooting the other people. How many people would die of like being obese? Like if those statistics times four, think about it in America would be ridiculous numbers. So every country has its bad or good, but yes, it is true that if you want to find something bad about China, it's not hard to find it. Right. It's not right. just because it's so big. Right. There's a lot of terrible stories coming out of India too. Russia, what do I see on TikTok of like, I, what, uh, only guys want to raise mean, bears or fight each other? That's all large, Russia Large is? countries, Brazil, Mexico. Ter I mean, it's Lots like- Lots of terrible like, stuff going it's on. endless. Yeah. yeah. I do think in a weird way, and this is like a whole nother video, in a weird way, like the white people who are really into geopolitics tend to be like upper class. They're not going to count a lot of the bad things in America because they're like, oh, that didn't happen amongst our tribe. But that's a whole nother issue. Um, somebody said they actually did demonize Japan in the late 80s and early 90s too, but everybody forgot because America created the Plaza Accords, dropped the Japanese economy. Japan was no longer competitive with the US. But when it was getting close, Andrew, there was a bunch of Time Magazine articles making Japan look bad too. Like there was an article from, I believe, what is this? 1987, How Japan Picks America's Brain. Basically about how like they're stealing U.S. technology and innovating on yeah. it. And then yeah, Japan used to take intellectual property. I'm sure uh, everybody... I, I think that... I, th I think the main difference is that when you met Japanese Americans or Japanese people in the West, you didn't get that feeling. No. Even if the Japanese government is responsible over, you know, the last century for some pretty terrible things, when you met a Japanese person it almost made you feel like they didn't do anything bad. Yeah, in fact, the only guy to ever be killed for, quote unquote, being Ch Japanese was a Chinese guy, Vincent Chin. Yeah, so I'm saying, every time you met China, uh, Japanese people at the teriyaki shop, at the Japanese market, 
when you seen them, uh, when you just met the international school students, when you, obviously, if you watch like, you know, hentai and all that stuff, like, you J-A-V. know, yeah, JAV, it just, it just warmed you up to it. Right, right, right. And that goes to our final point. Somebody said, listen, guys, all aspects matter, even at the height of U.S.-Japan economic war in the early 1990s, half of America was still really pro-Japan because they were obsessed with Kurosawa movies, Sony Walkmans, Ninjas, and Samurais. So this is where the soft power comes into play, where it's like, even when there's an economic rival, if there is some soft power culture that the other rival loves, it can soften the hatred. Yo, man, Japan was kind of like that toxic cool boyfriend that U.S. dated. Or and like, ABG. Yeah, but then became better, but then you forgot about their toxic past, but because they're just so good to you now. Yeah, it's like a hot bipolar girl. Dude, people love hot bipolar girls, even though generally- yeah, but It's because she loves you now, because yeah. the girl loves you now, so you're cool with it, and you're willing to for- forego, like not really think about her past, but she did some crazy toxic stuff. Back well, then. she's going to turn, and, and if it ever goes downside, she's going to turn your life upside down. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, let's just get into the takeaways. Like I said, these are a lot of uh, comments. They're not necessarily my thoughts. We're just responding to them. I'll say this. For the effective lifetime of the person asking the question, Andrew, I'm assuming it's a Chinese guy who is looking to date Eastern European women <sighs> like like uh, all the Korean guys are doing right now. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, probably not for another 20, 30 years. Uh, so it doesn't, so it will happen, but not for their effective to lifetime. see the narrative change. I think it's going to be tough. You know, I think that I'll say this. I think the people who can make Chinese culture seem cool and seem palpable are going to be rewarded. You know, the people who can come up with the products, the people who can explain the culture, the people who take after Bruce Lee and in, in being philosophical in a Chinese way, but being able to deliver it in a Western way. I think those are really important roles but I think you just got to focus on yourself and make, you know, it's going to be after interaction over interaction. If everybody that was Chinese, that everybody met was sweet and warm and nice, not, I'm not saying you have to be that. I'm just saying if that was that, if everybody got a pleasant interaction or a cool interaction with a Chinese person, it would change their perception. But because that's not how we're necessarily raised. So, yeah, no, I think that there's twofold. Listen, there's a lot of factors that the teenage cool side and or that's obsessed with soft power, they will never understand. And the super geopolitical side that's basically saying it because China is challenging Anglo-Saxon hegemony over the past 400, 500 years, Ray Dalio, et cetera, et cetera, the changing in nations. Uh, they're, they're both sides are missing up an aspect. Mm. Both sides are looking at it in a lopsided sense because I do think that the, um, the oxytocin piping is probably like an issue that, you know, Chinese need to take a look at. I do think TCM is... Uh, uh, outdated great at one point for preventative medicine i do think it's outdated now so i'm gonna end with this last comment i read this somebody said this is from a chinese person by the way he said people can start making a new chinese identity instead of clinging on to the old ones mm. and he was talking about how like yeah like maybe we do need to look at tcm companies yeah. and be like they're not putting enough into r&d clearly showing that it's not real right, or, right, right, or wing right. chun masters that are making a bunch of i'm not just singling out wing chun but i'm just saying shaolin masters that are making x and x amount of money teaching people things but then when they get into combat they're losing mm. to muay thai fighters or sancho or sanda mm. fighters i do think that there needs to yeah, be something. well we yeah a little bit more accountability Yes, because just because you created a full-fledged culture that was completely outside of the Western world thousands of years ago, it doesn't mean that you got to hold on to it forever. Right. You know the West, Andrew? They mix and match a lot of stuff from the East too, yeah. especially when it comes to MMA. Why can't the East just mix and match back to the West? Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Very deep questions. Like I said, some of this stuff belongs in a book, and perhaps I might be working on one. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. We encourage the debate. Keep it civil. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.